Welcome to USQ's Intermediate Tips and Tricks video for snitches, the second in this series. This video is meant to help Tier 3 snitches and up on improving the physical elements of your snitch game. Today we will be covering tips and tricks on positioning and awareness, seeker engagement, and 2 vs 1 snitching. Before we get started, we recommend that you purchase your own pair of snitch shorts at this point to practice with at home or on the pitch. You'll want to have the right size and fit for your body type. You can even personalize your pair with a logo or patch through some vendors, which are linked in the description below. Let's start with improving your positioning by setting your home base. As you know, snitches must do their best to remain within one and a half yards of the midline for the entirety of their snitch period. We recommend that you set a home base here. Furthest from the scorekeeping table, this provides the greatest spacing from where seekers are released and is an even, unbiased distance from both teams' hoops and benches. Having a set spot to return to will keep you mentally grounded, will help conserve energy as you're running around the midline less, and provide a smoother refing and spectating experience. Since one of the goals of the snitch is not to get caught, you may safely use the defending seeker as a screen to further prevent capture. Keep your feet moving, keep within the midline, and keep an eye on any score changes so you are not surprised by the defending seeker turning to catch you. A big part of snitching is endurance. You should expect to be out on the field for long stretches of time without water breaks or subs while under targeted attacks by both seekers. It can be exhausting. Prepare yourself to be in that physical and mental condition. Before working on the following tips, run a mile, do jumping jacks and burpees before shadow seeking, do high knees and sprints before working on footwork exercises, get tired now so you aren't tired when it counts, and remember, avoid capture humbly, get caught gracefully, have confidence in your strengths. You will be the best snitch that you can be if you believe in yourself. Always be prepared to adjust your gameplay based on who your seeker is. Think about how you will react differently if the seeker is taller than you, has a shorter arm span, is slower, prefers to dive to your right side, leads only with one arm, waits for a clear path before advancing, and other possible variables. Remember to stay on your toes. This allows you to quickly shift from one direction to the other as you move your body side to side and twist your hips. If you have your feet flat on the ground, the action of lifting your foot is going to slow you down and may lead to a quicker catch. Another reason to keep your footing as best you can is that when the snitch goes down, a three second countdown is automatically initiated by the LAR and the snitch game is essentially paused. Getting down repeatedly is frustrating for the seekers and spectators. Do not purposely abuse this or official action may be taken. If a seeker is leaning forward, you can push them onto the ground by putting weight onto their shoulders. Look to control their shoulders as much as possible. Placing your hand on the seeker, you can close your fingers around the seeker's arms and shoulders to give yourself a better grip. This allows you to better push back and more freely move them in your desired direction. Grabbing onto the wrist restrict their reach and typically forces them to retreat and reposition. Unpredictability is your friend. Keeping your arms moving makes you a moving target and makes it more difficult for a seeker to decide which direction to attack from. It also improves your response time to deflect their advances. In tight spots, you can move your arms behind your back to make a tighter barrier around the tail without of course touching the tail or impacting its position. When a seeker dives, stepping backwards does not necessarily take you out of danger. The seeker's momentum will keep them falling forwards and their arm extension will likely reach beyond the one or two steps you can take backwards by the time you notice them diving. Instead, choose a lateral direction and shuffle sideways, preferably away from their diving arm, while using both your hands and arms as blockers. Be very careful of a secondary reach from the seeker's other arm. Often, good seekers will faint with one hand and catch with the other. We are going to end this section with the most advanced tip of this video. Make sure 
you are entirely confident in your ability to maintain a safe environment for everyone around you before you attempt this move. This is meant to be used when you have a seeker in front of you and another behind you. If you are in a tight spot, spinning in the air allows you to move away from both seekers without providing an advantage to either. Try starting low and jumping high, or jump high and crouch low to change the position of your Z axis, making the tail position unpredictable. To take this another step further, incorporate your arms in distracting and distancing the seekers. You'll frequently find yourself in games where you need to know how to safely and effectively defend against both seekers while staying attentive and unbiased. This is certainly the most difficult part of snitching. Even with beater help coming from the teams and between the breaks you get from dismounting seekers and sending them back to hoops, there will frequently be times when you are stuck between two seekers. Here is how not to get caught. As we discussed in the beginner's video, point at the location of the seekers as often as you can to avoid missing their substitutions or losing them in the crowd of players leading them to a sneaky catch. Add in what we've covered during this video. Use your footwork effectively to control the positioning of the seekers, knowing that both of them have to come to you. Whenever possible, move so that one seeker is between you and the other seeker. The seekers will naturally help you do this as they don't want the other seeker to catch. Footwork will also help you create space. By faking one direction with your body and then cutting the other way, you will throw them off any predictable direction. Keep your movements circulating around the midline. Whenever possible, use both your arms against one seeker. If both of them converge on you, extend your arms against their center of gravity to push them back, and use their energy to push off them. Whenever you can, return back to your designated home base and plan how you will handle the next attacks. Thank you for watching the intermediate video on snitching tips and tricks. Find the links to our other videos in the description below. Like, comment, and subscribe. Have fun and good luck.